I think there's a great um, cliche that's grown up around my work that's, I think it happens to every artist who survives long enough to get to become a big cliche where everybody thinks they understand you. And in my case, it's that everything in my pictures was put there by me all, almost as if it was put there by hand and everything was intended. And not only was everything intended, but what I intended, I realized exactly. And that's really not the case. I control certain things and other things I don't even try to control. My name is Jeff Wall. I'm a photographer from Vancouver. My exhibition called Tableaus, Pictures, Photographs. It's the second exhibition I've had at the State Lake. The first one was, was about 30 years ago. This one deals with my work since 1996. We staan hier in de Erezaal, natuurlijk de mooiste zaal van het oude gebouw, wat eigenlijk bijna een soort paleis is. Hè? In deze prachtige zaal wilde Jeff en ik ook eigenlijk een, een statement maken. En je zult straks ook zien dat hier alleen maar lichtbakken hangen. Dus het straalt je straks tegemoet. Dit is een hele mooie, de Flooded Grave, omdat hij zo goed laat zien uh, hoe Jeff Wall speelt met die, met die spanning tussen werkelijkheid en, en, en fictie. Tussen de magie van iets wat totaal niet mogelijk is en iets wat ogenschijnlijk volstrekt vanzelfsprekend is. It represents a, what I think of as a, an instantaneous vision in which a person strolling in the graveyard just on a walk, maybe walking their dog or something, sees a freshly dug hole that you see often in cemeteries, unfortunately. And from, for some reason, this imaginary person has a vision of the sea. As if you were just suddenly associated water with the ocean in your mind. In his presentation, it's totally convincing. It's, it's for real. Only the second look reveals that it's impossible. Well, it's not impossible in the sense that if you did have such a daydream, mm -hmm. you would see that. Mm -hmm. Your mind's eye would see it. So I fixed that mm -hmm. by means of a photograph. In my pictures, I insist that there is no fiction. Mm -hmm. And that the word fiction doesn't really apply to my photography, at least. Mm -hmm. Maybe it doesn't apply to photography at all. So your work is never fiction, but you use the word imagination, oh, well, fantasy. I, I don't use, I, I just don't, Imagin I don't imaginary think, world I don't think fiction use. is the word. Fiction is a but literary imagination, word. Imagination, imaginary, you mm -hmm. use those words or not? Yeah, yeah sometimes so, I do. Yeah. I'm also contradicting myself. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> Somebody had said to me, a lot of your interiors are closed. You don't see out. I hate repeating myself, and I'm looking for something different, a new problem, which creates a different kind of picture. So I went and rented this apartment, and I was very lucky to get it because it had this really nice and unusual view of the harbor of Vancouver. So I hired this woman to move in and just uh, decorate the place and furnish it and in the end make it her apartment. I set up a video camera in the place and I left it and I said, look, just turn on the camera and do your things, whatever, and I'll look at the video and maybe we'll find an, a, moment. a moment, an event. And so we did eventually find this event where she was ironing. I asked her, should this be your own apartment? Have you got a boyfriend? Have you got a girlfriend? Do you have a partner? She didn't have a partner. I said, do you, do you want to pretend you've got a boyfriend and we can get somebody you know, you can come over? She said, no, I don't want any men around. Uh, but I do have a friend, maybe my friend can come, and that was her friend. Mm -hmm. And so then the friend came and they started just doing whatever they were doing. And then after, after she was ready with it, I just started photographing her. And it, again, it was a composition, so I did do certain things like move colors around and try to make it pleasant and enjoyable to look at. It's good to realize that the background of Jeff Wall the conceptual kunst is from the years 60 and 70 of the vorige right. eeuw. Een periode waarin zeg maar, de schoonheid van het beeld op zich niet belangrijk werd gevonden. Jeff Wall gaat eind jaren zeventig fotografie inzetten waarin een, het maken van een mooi, aantrekkelijk, goed gecomponeerd beeld weer een hoofdrol speelt. Dit is de allereerste zwart-wit foto die Jeff Wall maakte in 1996. Volunteer, vrijwilliger. En ik kan me heel goed herinneren dat ik hem voor het eerst zag op de documenta. Er waren vier zwart-wit foto's te zien. En Jeff Wall, bekend van zijn lichtbakken, eh, maakte opeens ook hele grote zwart-wit foto's. En voor iedereen was het een enorme shock dat de man die bekend was van de 
grote lichtboxen opeens zwart-wit foto's ging maken. I saw this volunteering thing going on in a place just like this, which is a shelter for people who need some shelter. And uh, those places are often run by volunteers. Um, and I met him in the, in the neighborhood where we are, where we were. This neighborhood is where there's a lot of shelters. So I just asked him to come and work for a month. And every night he came and he cleaned. Slowly he did what I find often happens in my pictures. After a certain amount of time, people aren't performing anymore. They're just being there as if it was a real situation, even though it's slightly not real. This exhibition, we've tried also to make the rooms be somehow filled with relationships. Mm -hmm. So, for example, here, I'd like to have one picture of a man lying on the grass, and then a kid about to lie on the grass. So, you know, he's, he's, this is really about gravity. He's lying down, and he's falling down. Boy Falls from Tree is zo'n foto waarvan je je afvraagt of die direct met het leven van Jeff Wall te maken heeft of dat het in het algemeen een jeugdherinnering is. Jeff Wall zegt vaak dat hij niet wil dat een, een foto een herinnering vastlegt, maar eigenlijk dat een foto een herinnering oproept. En eigenlijk is dat bij deze foto heel direct het geval. Falling is one of the most fundamental events that can happen. I fell out of a tree and broke my arm at the age of 11 or 12. And for whatever reason, it, the memory came back to me and I immediately felt that's a picture. But again, it's not my memory. Thousands and millions of people have had the same experience. It doesn't belong to me. And, and that also was something very attractive about it. And I wanted it to be this perfect, calm, clear, summer, absolute summer moment, as if, uh, the seasons had reached this kind of balance because it seemed like what's happening is really gravity, this enormous cosmic force, which we never, often never notice because we're just so subject to it. We don't notice it until something comes crashing down. And that seemed to be, you know, the drama there was. The rest of the world is completely as if it's arrested, completely at ease, calm. There's no wind, there's no trouble, there's no nothing. Everything seems to be static, but really it's not static. It's being held in place by this huge network of forces. And if you just uh, take one little miscalculation, you will experience it very, very quickly.